major statement in here. So, please. Well, I'd just like to add a couple of things. Um, I'll be talking more about this when I have my, my talk uh, later on next week. But I have brought with me from Canada the latest video uh, recording of the last session in New Zealand. They're finally done, and these will be available, and I'm going to have some samples with me. Plus, we have uh, the, the other session in Budapest, and all, it's all available. And a couple of other goodies. Also, brought a few copies of my book, Beyond Visas, based on the professor's work. So there will be some. I'll bring that up, and you can all look at it. Yeah, those who haven't seen, do you have a sample copy? So I can bring it in when I do my talk. Yeah, just it. show people, yes, and if they want to buy it, then uh, you have enough copies on hand. I, I have, I have, a, what, I don't know, twenty books or something. So. Or I have videos also, and where they can order it, and it'll be shipped. Mm -hmm. There'll be a discount for you guys, and uh, we'll throw in some free shipping and so on. Well, I have a yeah. sorry. Uh, no, no. I actually do have a small thing that caught in my mind when you yeah. were speaking, Professor. Um, I, I thought that you said some time ago in two or three seminars ago that the eastern part of the Roman Empire had also fallen because of the debasement of the coin. But this morning you quite clearly said that wasn't the case. Uh, now, I, now I, uh, I have to be uh, probably... Uh, correct, I have to stand to be corrected because I have not looked at the history right now. Probably what I meant was that in the last few decades of the Eastern Roman Empire there was some dilution. Okay. But there's nothing comparable to what happened in the western part where centuries after centuries, sure. probably over a period of three centuries they were progressively debasing the money. So the debasement in the east in the Byzantium Empire was not the cause of the collapse of the Byzantium Empire? Uh, that is effect. the interpretation I'm inclined okay. to put on it. But I'm not an economic historian, right. and uh, probably if you are interested. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I tell you, an interesting tidbit which has to do with this question. Uh, I already uh, made references to this during my f first lecture that I'm not going to go into the causes of the collapse of the eastern part of the empire, but your question tells me that I just have to give you one tidbit, one little thing, well, I think one big thing, really, because I, I, I am very, very much ashamed of this uh, in the history of the Western civilization. What happened was, as you know, in those years there were crusades organized by the Pope and various monarchs in the western part of Europe, or even the Middle Europe, uh, crusades, which meant an army was raised with the uh, purpose of going to the Holy Land. By the Holy Land we mean uh, the Middle East, uh, basically the territory now uh, where the State of Israel is, the Holy Land with Jerusalem as the capital, and that's where Christ lived and suffered and was, uh, uh, he's died on the cross, etc. And occupied uh, by the Ottoman Turks at that time, who were considered uh, um, what's the word? Infidels or faithless, well actually as we know they were 
probably Muslim at that time, but I'm again not sure about my dates when Muhammad lived. So that's not the issue. The issue is that they wanted to uh, push back the Turks and liberate the Holy Land and reclaim it for Christianity. And there were Crusade number one, Crusade number two, Crusade number three, and even Crusade number four. And uh, none of them was really successful, even though they did liberate Jerusalem and there was uh, uh, a king there for a short time. And uh, it looked like permanent but it wasn't. So really it was not a very successful enterprise. But by and large it was a virtuous enterprise in the sense that these soldiers, the crusaders as they were called them, were believers, they believed in the cause and they were fighting and uh, they thought that this was uh, noble and uh, virtuous fight and uh, there were several saints from that period who were actually crusaders and their uh, sainthood uh, had to do part in part with the, their role in the crusades. Well that's what you can say about the first three. However, the fourth crusade was a disaster, a disaster in the ethical sense of the word. It was uh, a terrible act on the part of the Western crusaders. In fact, uh, they should not even be called crusaders because they were just, what's the English word for those soldiers whose interest is robbing and raping and etc. Not really mercenaries, is it? That's just in the employ of um, yeah. brigands. Soldiers of fortune? Soldiers of fortune. Thank yeah. You. Well, this is what happened. Uh, I think it was Venice, which at that time was a very prosperous republic uh, in the Adriatic Sea. It was prosperous because of the trade with the Far East. Oriental goods came by ships to Venice and uh, then got distributed all over Western Europe. So very prosperous and, uh, and powerful too. They had the Navy and uh, a very efficient diplomatic service with spies all over. Uh, and Venice put in a lot of money into uh, the f organizing the Fourth Crusade. And then for some quirk of fate they failed to come up with the money to pay the soldiers. So these crusaders were of course mad, hopping mad, that they didn't get their uh, pay. And they decided that they uh, will get the money by hook or crook. One way or and that's other. exactly what they did. <clears throat> At that time, Hungary had a city in the Adriatic just opposite of Venice on the other side of the Adriatic Sea and the name of that city was, the Hungarian name was Zara but probably there was also another name which is, and anyhow, I... Now it is Rijeka. Hmm? Now it is Rijeka. No, 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 no. Rijeka was, Rijeka was Ragusa. Zara and Ragusa are not the same. But uh, you, you see, I'm not really prepared to give you the history, but that's a very interesting episode. 
which is not very well known, and I thought it was the opportunity uh, Philip gave me to make it a little better known. So this Hungarian city, uh, which was also a port, but not nearly as prosperous as Venice, but still prosperous enough to have uh, lovely churches and palaces and so on. So uh, the Crusaders had their navy equipped originally by the Venetians and uh, they decided that they will uh, go against Zyra and they did and uh, they sacked the city, including churches. Now I'm just imagining crusaders robbing Christian churches. And their mission was to go to the Middle East and reconquer the Holy Land. And that's not what they did. They started uh, raping Christian cities. And this is an historical fact, this is not a legend. So they were very much encouraged because of their successes in Zara, a completely defenseless, unprepared for an attack from Crusader, unheard of, unthinkable. And uh, the Crusaders of the Fourth Crusade next year decided that they will go against Constantinople. It's a bigger plum. Uh -huh. The biggest plum there was at that time in the area, you know? A year later, exactly one year later, they attacked Constantinople and sacked it too, in the same way, exactly. They had the pattern, they were very successful. So they sacked Constantinople, which was the center of the, the heart of the Eastern Roman Empire. The Christian Roman Empire. Uh, which was already Christian, yes. fully, yes. you know? And that weakened the Eastern... Well, of course, this started in the summer sometime and then they were finished with the job by the fall and then they withdrew with the loot they left so the emperor could come back and resume uh, but it was too much they would the empire was weakened so the empire destroyed itself quite literally not the empire well, the, uh, the crusades the crusades started it and then, uh, probably, the, the, the Bazan was started, you know, this gold coin which survived for it. This is, by the way, I remember very clearly, there's no, I'm not taking this back, that the Bazan survived 800 years. But the Eastern Roman Empire uh, existed for almost 1,000 years. So the last few years uh, were those years when the emperor was forced to dilute the money because they, the, this incredible attack of the fourth crusade on the city we can destroy so much of the self-confidence and so on and uh, the decline was uh, fatal, especially in view of the threat from the East. Yes. Because the decision was already made by the Ottoman Turks to start their movement to the West. They had a mission, they wanted to spread the faith, the Muslim faith, and the, the uh, Muslim religion was a militant religion. It was considered a virtue to kill and 
subjugate people who oppose them. And if you died in this mission, then the Prophet Muhammad waited, waited yes. for you in afterlife in the heaven to embrace you. So that this was, as it still is, I guess, for Muslim, a greatest honor to die in in the jihad or the you know spread of the faith. Well, be it as it may. The fact is that when the Ottoman Turks put Constantinople under siege, then it was the last hour of the... Yes. And, and when the capital was gone, the empire was gone. There, it wasn't that moving the capital somewhere else and trying to... They, the whole structure of the empire was so weakened and weakened by the Crusaders that it just didn't have the power to regenerate. I would guess that it was also the administrative center. And that if you take it, out it the was. administrative center, then it's very it hard was. for the remnants to survive independently. Yeah, and of course they have named. This is a very interesting part of history. And because of that shame, it's an incredible shame and the plot on the history of Western civilization, including Christianity, because it was never properly uh, um, what's the word? The uh, the church should have denounced that mm. in no uncertain terms, and I think it never happened. Mm. It never happened, and in fact. There was probably a cover-up at the time that just forget this. We don't want to think about this. This is not something nice in our background, but let's keep quiet about it. You know. So I personally feel very much ashamed because of that. I'm not an historian. I haven't studied it, but I read enough about it that that uh, there's just no excuse. Just no excuse for that, you know. And of course that was the last. It, it, it never got to the Holy Land, the Fourth Crusade, and there was never a Fifth Crusade either. But there were other very shameful things. For instance, they uh, thought that uh, after suffering so many defeats, the Crusaders at the hand of the Ottoman Turks and other uh, people lived in that area. They thought that God will not allow another defeat if they organize an army, another crusade, of underage boys mm -hmm. and girls, you know, probably 15, 16 years old give them weapons and training and send them against the enemy. This was the children's crusade. The children's crusade, you know, shameful. Absolutely. From my reading, some of them were younger than that as well. Yeah, children, probably. As young as eight and yeah. nine. Again, I'm not knowledgeable enough, but I just want to mention that I'm deeply ashamed, uh, and that's one of the things which I I think Western civilization hasn't lived down and probably never will live it down. Well, thank you for that answer, Professor. And well, I, I have to say that I never have the sense of receiving an incomplete answer from you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, am, I am the first to admit that my knowledge is not as universal as I wish it was. And I was not prepared, really. Mm. I didn't come prepared for this question. But since you asked, I, uh, from memory and so on, and it, you, are, you could be right that I did make a statement to the effect that the Eastern Empire, just like the Western uh, Roman Empire, went down because of the dilution of the money. Now, I uh, cannot take it back 100%, but I 
stand to be corrected because it did play a role, the dilution of money in the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire, but to a lesser degree mm. than it yeah. was the case in the Western. In, uh, in, in, the, in the case of the Western Empire, it was a deliberate dilution of money because the government of the Western Roman Empire was expansive, they wanted to extend their power and domination and the more they got, the more they wanted and this has to be, had to be financed and it was very expensive and when the internal resources uh, were exhausted then they, today we would say they started using the printing press, yes. you see, but of course there was no printing press in those days. However, the today <coughs> equivalent would be the printing press, yes. and that's what they are using in Washington now, you see, which suggests very, very strongly, it's almost inescapable, the conclusion that the United States is following the example of the Western Roman Empire. Now in the East it was a weakening uh, and it was not the expansive, the aggressive, the imperialistic uh, goals in the case of the East. It was def the Eastern Empire was on the defensive and it was mortally wounded by this episode of the Fourth, fourth uh, Crusade. But today when the, oh sorry, I was to make one comment, today when the, um, the equivalent of the Western Roman Empire collapsing, which is what is happening now with America, there is no Eastern Roman Empire to continue. There is <laughs> the no Eastern is already gone, that was the Soviet Union. Exactly right. And then there may be a Far Eastern yeah. Empire, <laughs> Far Eastern Empire. Possibly. You know, and yeah. I, just to keep on, to keep on with this idea, uh, would you, would you say that uh, you cannot expand an empire without diluting the money? Mm. Or, in other words, uh, diluting the money is the price to pay to expand your empire. And the empire, the emperor wants, wants to expand its own mm. empire. It is the uh, natural law, it's a law of nature. <laughs> And so, is that, is it, would it be possible to expand an empire, like any kind of empire, uh, would it be possible to expand an empire without dealing, diluting the money? Trade and commerce. Well, this is a very complex uh, situation, and the question is very complex, because it's uh, not black and white, it's, uh, there's a spectrum, there are various things to consider. Just one example, and there are several others. But uh, it's not just a matter of the empire's struggle with outsiders, outside enemies, regardless who started the aggression, whether it was the empire first or the barbarians or whatever. But there is another aspect to it. And, which is, and this is the internal situation. And this is where I find it absolutely frightening, the parallel between the Western Roman experience and the United States. And I'm referring to the welfare state. The Western Roman Empire was a welfare state because there was a proletariat in Rome. These were people who were not slaves, but they had no means of supporting themselves. You see, just like if you have a welfare in, say, uh, the uh, city of, uh, let's mention a U.S. city where there's Detroit. strong welfare. Detroit. 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 But then, uh, of course, the people who are lazy, who don't want, they, they, it's just a magnet to 
attract them. Yeah. They will go where the welfare of money course. is given out. And then you have but another we'll the incentive. <laughs> yeah. If you pay people for not working, then of course they will not work. They will be very happy to comply. Now, uh, if you have another city which has no welfare or very little welfare, then strictly for the indigenous who are suffering and who are sick or unable, but no able-bodied worker will get a penny from the public purse, then they will avoid it. They are not interested going there. So, you know, this was the case. Rome introduced a welfare system. They called it Panem et Circenses. So that means free bread and free entertainment. Television. No, they didn't have television. But they had circuses, and this is the word Circenses. Circuses, where, you know, the gladiators had to find lions in the arena, mm. and a couple thousand people in the Colosseum of Rome were enjoying uh, the sight of blood flowing freely. And then it could be even worse, because the gladiators did have weapons to fight the lions, but when they threw the uh, Christians without any weapons, and the lions could devour them right on the spot. That was also on the program. So, Panem et Circenses, welfare state. Mm. Today it's the same. They get uh, the, uh, the, you know, they get paid for not working, and uh, they get television entertainment, which is practically subsidized by the government, although it's in a subtle way, but obviously the television is not there for educational purposes, it's there for keeping people occupied and not to think about their position in society, what they could contribute, but just panem and senses. So this is frightening, the, the uh, similarity between the two cases. So in answering your question, I would say that uh, the foreign uh, struggle of the Western Roman Empire or the United States and Iraq and Afghanistan and now probably they will get involved in in uh, Libya or wherever, you know, is, is not the only problem, and this is not the only problem where money is b being burned, so to speak, in, in adventures, because that's what they are, adventures. The United yes. States has absolutely no interest to get involved in faraway countries like Iraq or Afghanistan or which is Afghanistan is the most beautiful example because <laughs> the British tried to do it who else? The Russians the Russians, the Soviets right back the to whole, Afghanistan. with their own brutality the Soviet which you know uh, in the case of Hungary, we had a first-hand experience with the brutality of the Soviet forces. And, uh, and in spite of that, these precedents, the Americans thought they can do it. Now they got it. They could not extricate themselves from it. They just went into the trap. And that's, you know, one of the... It's Thanks. possible under George Bush that they actually didn't know anybody had ever been to Afghanistan <laughs> before. <laughs> Certainly. We better run out there. Oh, we have over time. Well, question. Well, I'd like to add something to your question about empire. And if you recall what Professor said about Ayn Rand's talk, coercion is not as efficient 
as free trade. Mm -hmm. And by definition, an empire is coercive. So all, overall, the efficiency will be reduced, and it will always cost more to enforce your will than to cooperate with other people. So that wealth has to come from somewhere, either by expanding the empire and, and, and plunder until you can expand no more, or by printing money, because the actual wealth is being destroyed, capital is being destroyed, and not created fast enough to replace it. So Thank you, Rudy. That was very good. Okay, we're going to wrap up now. And um, don't forget, lunch is at 1 o'clock downstairs if you're having lunch on premises. And um, the afternoon session starts at 2.30. And with Mr. Keith Weiner, who's going to be addressing us. So thank you very much. See you either at 1 o'clock or 2.30. Thank, thank you. you.